This is an RPG A Day response from the Casting Shadows blog. Today is August 2nd, which means we've reached the second day of RPG A Day for this year. And our second question, one of the harder questions, at least for me, and I suspect for a lot of people out there, how do you choose your best session of an entire year? The most recent sessions stick in our mind. The Sessions farther away have become glossed over with you know, the mists of memory. How do you choose? How do you decide? I've had sessions face to face, which were amazing. I've had sessions online and hangouts, which were amazing. And I've had scenes in play by post or play by email games, which were equally amazing. All of these games in different contexts, in different games with different people. How do you choose? Does choosing one make other people feel like they were excluded? How do we do this? I've never been a big fan of best questions, but at the same time, I enjoy the challenge of trying to figure out my own criteria for what I would label best without copping out and saying, well, there's this one and this one and this one. And, you know, they're all amazing. So I'm defining best for this question by what gave me the biggest challenge in terms of orchestrating it and seemed to me to be a lot of fun for and a, a difficult challenge for the players involved for an end result of you know an emotional experience and that brought me to thinking of two particular scenes one in the broken rooms campaign that I ran online in a Facebook group a while back and one for my face-to-face -face Star Wars group and ultimately I went with the Star Wars answer because lacking the slow pace of an online in-text campaign that challenge uh, that challenge level is different doing it live doing it in the weird context of a coffee shop and that sort of thing. That's what pushes this memory over the edge. Now, you'll be able to find the full details of this particular session in a recap, but we'll, we'll gloss over it here just so that this clip has some meaning. What's the session I'm talking about? Well, the group had been trying to recover property of theirs, which was very important, which had been stolen and it had been stolen with the entire freighter that was transporting it. So they had tracked down the location of the freighter and it was being auctioned off under you know, quasi-legal circumstances in this far off system. And, uh, and everything about it screamed trap. And yet the group found a way to go, how to cover their tracks, to get there, make local contacts and work their way toward getting in a position to get their property back and get this ship back. Tensions kept mounting, dangers, threats kept mounting. It was their first meeting with our version of you know, the Imperial Inquisition uh, forces that hunt down force sensitives. It was their first real brush with uh, a world on the edge of rebellion. And they were realizing some sympathies in themselves, stronger pulls to the rebellion than they had expressed before. And through all of this, they keep telling themselves, you know, we're, we're in it for the money. As soon as we can, we can get our stuff back, we can sell it and we can be done with all of this forever. You know, there was an awful lot of, you know, run off to the edge of the empire, escape, get away from all this politics stuff and, and all this pressure. And yet whenever it was necessary, they put their own lives on the line to rescue the people that needed it self-sacrifice and and bravery the type that we go to the movies to see and yet this is happening you know around our table among a group of friends and it's not happening in a in a contrived way it's happening in that in that instant of sincerity and i love that stuff as they are trying to make their escape from the system they realize these vast forces 
of the Empire have been arrayed against them. Multiple Star Destroyers are closing in on their position. The leader of the force is uh, one of the characters main enemy, main source of obligation in Edge of the Empire, and she has the ability to just reach out and, and crush him with a word. Um, her, she knows how to to unman him, how to, how to push him over the edge into fury. She can manipulate him at will, it seems like. And will they even survive with all this military might pouring down on them, seemingly intent to kill? What are they going to do? They could have just run. They could have just fled, abandoned everything, and escaped. But they refused. They stuck it out. They struck a blow for themselves. They struck a blow for each other. They ensured that their, their dependents were able to escape. And maybe down in the darker corners of their heart, they lit small fires for the rebellion by far my top session of the last year come on back tomorrow to see question three and watch other people's questions from today and share them around thanks for watching to get the questions and see a list of video responses check brigadecon.org for a weekly recap go to the rpg brigade channel on youtube